Welcome to the Plug in India Weekly, and I'm Amit, your host. Uh, and there is no Abhishek because he's traveling, so you have to bear with me this week. In this episode, we will be talking about two electric vehicle startups, Ola Electric and Pravek Dynamics. I feel that these two startups will be creating a disruption in the electric vehicle space. We also have an audio version, the audio podcast of the show, which is available to you on Google Podcast, Apple Podcast, and Spotify. So starting with the first news of the show, Pravek Dynamics reveals Made in India electric car for fleets, which is a Bengaluru based electric vehicle startup. And Pravek Dynamics has unveiled their electric car prototype, which is called the Extinction MK1. The electric car will be going in production in 2021. The electric car will be sold in Delhi and Bengaluru initially and later in Mumbai, Chennai and Hyderabad. They plan to offer exclusive lease options only and won't be available for sale to individual buyers. Pravik Dynamics expects to sell around 2500 of the Extinction MK1 every year. Mr. Siddharth Bagri, the founder of Pravik Dynamics, said that almost 90% of the vehicle is made in India with smaller high-value components that are imported. He said there is a huge opportunity for Indian components and car makers to export to the world. The electric car sports a coupe style design just like the Tagore EV from Tata. There also seems to be an emphasis on aerodynamics. The distinct feature is a full LED headlamp across the front grille. So let's look at the Extinction MK1 specifications. So it is a 96 kilowatt hour battery as compared to a Tata Nexon EV which is a 30 kilowatt hour battery. The drivetrain will give you a 149 kilowatt of power as compared to a Hyundai Kona which gives you a 100 kilowatt of power. The top speed of the car is 196 kilometers per hour and I don't, haven't seen any other electric car right now in the market which is giving you that speed. And with a 500 kilometer range this car is on top of the mark with any other electric car. So hats off to Pravek Dynamics for creating a made in India electric car is definitely not an easy feat. Localizing and making up to 90% of its components in India is another example of how the EV industry is way ahead as compared to any other industries like the mobile phones or solar panels and the pharma industry in terms of making in India. So looks like Praveg are focusing on the luxury fleet market. We can picture this classy, beautiful and silent electric car operating in luxury hotels or rented by corporates to transport their senior management people in full luxury. So I have two questions for Praveg Dynamics. If fleets are your major applications, then why do you require high powered specifications? Do you really think a hotel or a fleet owner would care about a 0 to 100 in 5.5 seconds or even or even speeds of say 196 kilometers per hour. And my second question to Pravek Dynamics is that why can't an EV enthusiast buy one of your cars or I mean lease one of your cars and for their personal transport. I just wonder you know why wouldn't you offer it to individuals. Also we wanted to point one observation that during the reveal event, Mr. Siddharth Bagri went ahead and pierced a lithium cell and showed how it explodes. Also, he made certain statements that in an electric car, you're actually sitting on a battery which is like a bomb, which actually is not true. I actually found these statements and these fire demonstrations very, very irresponsible, especially when you're doing it in front of a national media and you are selling an electric car. And we already know that the media has actually been anti-EV and these kind of statements are actually going to aggravate it further. Ultimately, Pravik will need huge funding to even think about getting into production. If they are only offering leases to businesses, they will need to have a strong financial partner who will invest in these cars. So there are many questions for Pravik Dynamics uh, which have to be answered and hope the team will communicate with the community regularly and send us updates. Uh, in the coming year in 2021 and we wish the team all the best. So the next news is about Tata Nexon EV and how they have reduced their subscription cost by about 12,500 and now the subscription for Tata Nexon EV is available in Delhi for a 36 month period 
for just 29,500. So the 18 month period has been discontinued and now the options available are 12, 24 and 36 months. So here are the rates for Mumbai city uh, for the various options. The cheapest option to lease a Nexon EV would set you back by rupees 31,400. This comes with a cap of 1500 kilometers per month and is applicable for 36 months. The most expensive option to lease a Nexon EV would set you back by rupees 39,900. And this comes with a cap of 2500 km per month and is applicable for 12 months. So here are some uh, more details about the subscription plan. There is a one-time refundable security deposit of Rs 50,000 apart from the monthly payment. Oryx will be installing an EV charger at the customer's home or workplace. At the end of the selected tenure, leases can either end the subscription by returning the car or extend the subscription. So do keep in mind there are certain advantages and there are certain uh, limitations. The road tax, insurance and maintenance is included in the lease but and the speed is capped at 80 km per hour. So we still feel the lease uh, prices are way too expensive because in Mumbai you will be spending about uh, 11,30,400 for a 3 year lease and uh, at the end of the third year you won't even be owning the car so we actually feel the lease scheme will be attractive for corporate fleets who actually may be driving the car say for about 80 kilometers per day and also for individuals or you know corporate individuals i would say who are actually moving cities every year so actually they don't have to then worry about uh, buying a car, owning a car or even transporting car uh, to the next city that they're moving to, selling it. And all those things are gone and you just, you know, lease it. So let's look at a little comparison here. Uh, you know, a Nissan Leaf in the US or the UK, you will be ending paying only half the amount of the, uh, the actual price of the car uh, in the three year lease. But in India, a Tata Nexon EV subscription model that we were talking about just now, you're actually paying for about the full amount of the car. So do let us know what you feel about the subscription model and or would you be going for the lease for the Tata Nexon EV? So moving on to the next news article, Hero Electro has launched their first smart electric cycle in India called the F6i and this electric cycle has removable batteries. This electric cycle was showcased in the Auto Expo 2020 and now is available on the Hero Electro website. The electric cycle has the following features. Uh, it has a 7-speed Shimano Altus physical gear system and the bike has been powered by a 36-volt lithium battery. Uh, it is claiming a range of 60 km per charge. There is a iSmart app with smart connectivity with Bluetooth devices. This is definitely a first in any electric cycle because I haven't heard of any other app that is connected to a cycle before. Aditya Munjal, the CEO of Hero Electro said, F6i is a vibrant and glorious new addition to our ever-growing portfolio of electric cycles. We have introduced it at a critical time when the demand for high-end biking categories has skyrocketed in recent months. So finally Hero Electro has launched an electric cycle with removable batteries and we are hoping that this battery which is a 36 volt would be about a 10.4 ampere hour or a 13.4 ampere hour battery. Well they haven't yet revealed the, spec the specifications of the battery yet to us. Also the frame is made out of alloy instead of a steel frame so definitely it will be lighter and we expect the weight to be around 18 to 20 kilos uh, and we hope to do a test ride soon. And we all know that e-bikes are expensive and the F6i is no exception at a 49,500 price. We thought Hero with its clout would localize competence and launch affordable e-bikes but it might take few years and we hope such e-bikes will cost under rupees 30,000 someday. Great going Hero Electro team and we hope to do a review very soon and show it to you guys on our YouTube channel. So moving on to our last news item which is a big news and it's coming from Ola Electric which has signed an MOU with the Tamil Nadu government and is investing rupees 2400 crores uh, to set up an Ola Electric scooter factory. This will be the world's largest scooter manufacturing facility 
and it will have an annual capacity of 2 million units. Ola believes that the factory will galvanize India's electric vehicle ecosystem and establish India as a key player in the EV manufacturing space. Ola believes that India can be a global hub for manufacturing of EVs. They also believe that this investment will reduce India's import dependence and boost local manufacturing for electric vehicles. Ola's factory will manufacture electric vehicles for customers in India and abroad. The company is gearing up to launch the first of its range of highly anticipated electric scooters in the coming months. Bhavish Agarwal, Chairman and Group CEO of Ola said, We are excited to announce our plans to set up the world's largest scooter factory. This is a significant milestone for Ola and a proud moment for our country as we rapidly progress towards realizing our vision of moving the world to sustainable mobility solutions across shared and owned mobility. This will be one of the most advanced manufacturing facilities in the world. This factory will showcase India's skill and talent to produce world-class products that will cater to global markets. As many of you know, in May 2020, Ola Electric actually acquired an Amsterdam-based electric scooter startup uh, called the Itergo BV. Itergo had developed an all-electric state-of-the-art app scooter which has won multiple awards across the world for its innovative design and engineering. The app scooter uses swappable high energy density batteries to deliver a range of up to 240 kilometers and a class leading acceleration. Wow, we love the app scooter design and the technology used behind it and we hope that uh, Ola Electric launches that scooter for the Indian market. We also know that in 2019, Ola Electric actually got a massive funding of about 1,725 crores from a Japanese investment firm called SoftBank. This is definitely a huge amount for an electric vehicle startup. So we know that with the acquisition of Etergo, Ola has access to the advanced technology. So this will definitely ensure speeding up the development and the launch of the electric app scooter in India. Uh, we are not sure if there will be major modifications to the Etergo's app scooter. We feel there won't be major changes to the scooter as they want to launch a world-class product for the global market, which also includes India. The app scooter absolutely looks incredible. The first thing you notice is the large and easy navigation display on the scooter, just like our Aether. We were impressed by the modular battery design. You can choose a battery based on your range requirements. The unique curved banana shaped batteries fit under the floorboard of the scooter. The curved batteries could be ac accessed from the cargo hatch under the seat. The design makes it easy to carry and also ensures you have all the space in the world in the boot. So exciting times after Aether and Chetak, this is the third electric scooter which will be super intelligent and powerful and connected. But we know that India is a price conscious market and if Ola Electric can actually launch the electric app scooter under 1 lakh, this will actually push Aether and Chetak to actually come up with uh, models which are within that range. And that will definitely be a great move for the Indian electric scooter industry. So definitely Ola Electrics is here to cause disruption and maybe will make the dinosaurs like the TVS Vespa and the Hondas to move their asses. So we need more large independent EV focused companies with no ice package or agendas and their focus is only to launch great electric vehicles. So with that, we come to the end of this week's show and do leave your comments. We would love to hear from you. Uh, we would like to know what you feel about these new launches and are you excited, not excited? Would you be going ahead for the subscription or not going ahead for the subscription with the Tata Nexon EV? We would love to hear from you. Please go ahead and leave your comments. You can find the transcripts for each episode on our website. Plug in India is an EV advocacy group and a social enterprise dedicated to promoting electric vehicles and sustainable transport in India. You can write to us at support at the rate pluginindia.com and you can find us on Twitter, Facebook and Instagram. We are self-owned and not part of any large media organization. If you would like to support our work, why not become a Patreon supporter or a YouTube channel member? It helps us in paying our staff and our bandwidth. You can support the show for free too by writing a review or recommending us to your friends and family Every little bit helps. 
subscribe to our podcast on Apple Podcasts or Google Podcasts and Spotify. Thank you so much and goodbye.